So you're ready to move on to the terminal and you wanna learn some commands. So let's go through the commands that every user needs to know in order to start getting around the system and start interacting with it from the terminal. The first thing we'll do is launch a terminal. So it doesn't really matter which Linux distribution you're using for this, they'll work the same. Just make sure to open up a terminal. So command number one, CD. CD stands for change directory and allows you to navigate through the file system in your terminal. So if I wanted to change over to another directory, I can type in CD space and then some path to a directory. For example, I'll start with the root directory. So I'll do a slash and I'll press tab a couple times that will list the various other directories located inside my root directory, which is signified by the slash. As we can tell, there's a bunch of directories here that we can go into. Let's say I want to change over to the etc directory. I can do that by typing in etc now and then press enter. And now I'm in the etc directory. You can also go right back one directory if you do cd space dot dot. That takes you back one directory and now we're back into the root directory. I'll mention a few shortcuts with CD as well. If you type in CD and just press enter, that takes you to the home user directory, which is signified by a tilde. You can also accomplish this by doing CD space and then press the tilde, press enter. That also takes you to the same location as you can tell here signified by the tilde. Also another important one is if you do CD space and then just a slash and press enter, that takes you to the root directory which is where we were at before with all these directories. The root directory is just the beginning of the file system. Command number two, ls. ls allows you to list the contents of the current working directory. So for example, if I type in ls here and press enter, look at that, I see all the various different files and directories in my root directory. So for another example, we'll just do cd from the last command we learned. We'll put a tilde in, space tilde, I'm going to press enter. I'll do ls here and look at that. I have a bunch of directories here as well in my home users directory. Notice that using cd and ls together are great because as you're changing directories, you can list what's in those directories. So you might've noticed some color coding here. This changes depending on the terminal style, but for example, here files are showing up in white and directories in the blue color. And there's a light blue and a green color signifying special directories as well. We won't go into that, but it's nice to understand that there are differences. Using ls, you can also do ls space dash a. That will list all the contents of the current directory, even the hidden files. So notice there's now bash history, logout, so on and so forth. This again displays all, meaning hidden and non-hidden files and folders. Finally, one last one that I like using is ls space dash la, which is a flag to say list all. If you press enter, this will again show you all the items in the current directory, but it will show it in a list with some more detailed information, including permissions, the current user who owns the directory or file, how big the file or directory is, and then when it was created. All right, now that you know how to change directories and list the contents of a directory, let's talk about command number three, mkdir. mkdir is short for make directory will create a new directory for you in the current working directory. So since I'm in the home users directory, signified by the tilde, it's gonna make one there. So if I have this space here and then I just type in new directory and press enter, that's going to create the directory. And let's use ls to display the contents of this directory and look right here, a new directory was formed. We can now use this to store files. mkdir is an important command so you can organize your files throughout the file system using the terminal. If you're enjoying learning these absolute beginner commands in the terminal and you want to learn more about Linux, check out my website at learn.savvynick.com. Command number four, touch. Touch allows you to create a new file in the current working directory. Again, simple to use. Type touch followed by a space and then the name of the file that you want to create. You can also put extensions in for the file. For example, if I wanted to create a C++ file, I could do something like new.cpp. That will create a new file called new with an extension of .cpp. So I'm going to press enter and let's use ls and see if that file was created. Sure was, here it is, new.cpp. Touch is a great way to create these new files. Now you can't edit anything with touch, but there are plenty of terminal-based text editors 
so make sure to check out some, such as Vim, Nano, or Emacs. I do have tutorials on how to use those on the channel. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below if you're interested in learning more about the terminal text editors. For fun, let's create one more file. I'm gonna type in touch and create another file. I'm gonna call it new file without an extension. I'll press enter and if I do ls, now I have new file as well. So you might be asking, who do these files belong to since we just created them? Well, if we do ls-la, we'll see that new CPP belongs to Savvy Nick since that's the user we're using to create these files with touch. Command number five, PWD. PWD stands for print working directory. This allows you to view the current directory that you're in and what the path to that directory is with respect to the root directory. If you press enter, you'll notice a line given to you. And for me, it says slash home slash Savvy Nick. So the root directory inside the home directory inside the Savvy Nick directory is where we're currently located. So for example, if I wanted to navigate back to this directory at some point, I can do it. First off, let me just list what's in here so we know what we're looking for. Great. So I'm going to use CD, go to the root directory, and then now from the root directory, if I type in LS, I'll notice the contents don't match up anymore as they did. So let's navigate back. If I type CD slash home slash Savvy Nick and press enter, now I should be back to where I was. I'll type in PWD. Look at that matches home Savvy Nick, home Savvy Nick, and the contents match once more. PWD is a great way to make sure you don't get lost while navigating the Linux file system using the terminal. Sometimes when you get down the rabbit hole too much, it can be very easy to get lost. So just remember PWD to find your way. Command number six, cat. Yes, just like the animal, this is a command that allows you to display the contents of a file in the terminal. Now this doesn't really give you any editing capability, but it's a simple and great way to view a file. So now we're going to have to find a file that we can see the contents of. Uh, for example here, I'll just do Etsy default grub. This is the configuration for the bootloader. And look at that, it gets spit out onto the screen, all the information that's inside the file, and we go right back to the terminal. Now it is a little bit of a pain to use cat because it just spits everything out on the screen, hard to navigate. To make things a little easier on you, just use less which allows you to scroll through things. So for example, we'll just do Etsy default grub again. And now I can go up and down with the arrow keys and look through the entire contents of the file. Makes things a little easier for you. And when you reach the end, you'll see this line that says end. If you want to exit out of here, just press Q and you're out of it. Command number seven, MV. MV allows you to move files around the system. This is also useful for changing names of files. For example, we made new.cpp earlier. Let's change that to old.cpp. So if I do mv space new.cpp space, this is the location and the name of the file that I'm going to be moving to. So I'll just do old.cpp. So what this will do is move new CPP to something called old.cpp. And if I list the contents here, we'll notice that now we don't have a new dot cpp anymore but we do have an old dot cpp awesome so the other thing you can do with move mv space let's take that old dot cpp file and put another space and now we can move to another directory i'm going to press tab a couple times that will list the contents of the current directory and i'll move old dot cpp into this new directory so if i do mv space old cpp space new directory with a slash and press enter now I shouldn't have the old CPP in here anymore. I don't, great. But if I change directories to the new directory, I should expect old.cpp to be in here. And look at that, it is. Now you know how to move files around the file system. I could have also added at the end a name for the file instead of calling it old.cpp. I could have called it something else. I just would have had to put it here towards end. So for example, I could have done move old.cpp to the new directory and called it old2.cpp. That would have moved old CPP into new directory and renamed it to something else that's specified here, which I would have specified as old2.cpp. Of course, I'm only showing you the absolute basics here. Plenty of these commands have an extensive amount of switches and options that you can use with the command that makes them super powerful for navigating 
creating and moving things around the file system. So make sure to check out the manuals if you're interested in getting into more depth with these commands. Command number eight, CP. CP stands for copy, and it's much like the move command, but instead of moving things, we can create copies of them. So for example, in the new directory that we created, I'm going to copy from that new directory. We should have that old .cpp file in there, and we sure do. I'm gonna put a space, so I'm specifying CP for copy, then the directory and file I want to copy, and then where I want to copy that. If I wanna copy it to the current directory, I can do that by just simply typing dot, and that will copy old.cpp here in the current working directory. If I want to change the name of the copied file, I can do that too by doing old copy.cpp. So what does this mean before we get too confused here? We're copying from one directory called new directory, a file called old.cpp, we're copying it here, so our current directory is home, and we're calling it old copy.cpp. So after this is done, I should see in the new directory, there's still old.cpp, and in the current directory that I'm in, I should see old copy.cpp. Let's press enter. If I list the contents here, I see old copy.cpp. Great. If I change directories to the new directory and do ls, I still have old.cpp. Awesome. Copy again is a great way to copy files, but also folders in a very fast and efficient way. If you want to do a folder, you have to add in an extra switch or argument, which is cp-r. So let's actually do this by doing back one directory. I want to copy new directory to new directory two. How do I do that? Well, I can do cp for copy, then dash r for recursively new directory, and then I'll specify where I want that directory. I'm just gonna keep it in the same spot so I don't really have to do anything besides specify a name. Let's see what happens there. So now if I do an ls, I notice that there's a copied new directory two created in this home folder. If we look inside of new directory two, what do we have here? Old.cpp, just like we have in the new directory. I'm gonna go back, command number nine, rm. rm stands for remove. And since we've learned how to create files, move them around the system, and even copy them, we also need to understand how to remove them. This is important, but also dangerous, so be very careful when using remove because it's an easy way to lose your files if incorrectly used. For example, if you specify a directory, it's going to remove the entire directory and all the contents of the directory as well. So let's get rid of that new directory too that we just created. If I press enter, notice what it says, cannot remove new directory too. It is a directory. Well, that's because we're missing a switch. If we do rm-r, now it will allow us to remove that new directory too because we specified we want to remove it recursively. That just means apply remove on anything inside of the new directory as well. So I press enter. Now new directory two is gone and we only have new directory. If you want to remove a file, it's simpler. Just do rm space, for example, old copy.cpp, press enter and it's gone. Now you understand how to remove your files and your folders. And this is a very important command to know. Just be careful with it. Finally, the last command, sudo. Sudo is a very important command that helps you elevate your privileges of your current user or even log into another user. We'll talk about two ways of using this command here. After learning all those commands, if you are trying to access a file that belongs to the system, it might not let you use some of the commands that I mentioned, such as copying, moving, or removing, because it requires these elevated privileges, and sudo allows you to do just that, elevate your privilege. And since we learned a bunch of basic commands, I think you might be ready for sudo. So for example, sudo, followed by some command, whatever it is. For example, we could do sudo space cp. And what this means is we're requesting elevated privileges to run a command and the command is copy. And now can access important files and folders, typically system files and folders that require the elevated privileges. And you use your copy command as we discussed before. So some file that you're planning on copying to some location and calling it some other file. Of course, just giving you an example. This isn't really copying anything. If I press enter, now I'm getting asked for an administrative password. And as long as your current user belongs to the sudoers group, meaning your user has the ability to elevate their privileges, 
then you can type in the password for the user. So I'm going to do that. And it says it cannot stat some file, no such file or directory, of course. That's just the made up file name, so I can't do that. But notice that it did try copying with super privileges. And a different way we can use sudo is type sudo space su. This will actually log you in and allow you to remain logged in with elevated privileges. So if you do that and type in your password, look at that. Now you're the root user of the file system. Just be careful with all that power because now you have access to any and all of the system. So you can access or delete anything you want, which can wreak havoc on the system. So make sure to use your powers wisely. One thing I'll mention about sudo su keeps you in the current directory that you were last using. You could also do, let's see if I just exit out of the user by typing exit. If you do sudo dash i, that will log you in also as the root user, but will take you to the root user's home directory. Notice slash root. Well, that's it for the top 10 absolute beginner commands for beginners. If you stuck with me this entire time, make sure to smash that like button for me and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, post them in the comment section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.